Hello, my monstrosities. Hello once again. Today I bring to you something that requires further testing, but I think you can do. I want to talk about Crusher Stampede and a very specific thing about Crusher Stampede that I don't think anybody has uh been willing to do so far. Well, not in tournament play, but, you know, that's what we'll get to. First, Crusher Stampede. The detachment rule is Enraged Behemoths. Each time a Tyranage monster model from your army makes an attack, add one to the hit roll if the model's unit is below its starting strength, one to the wound roll if it's below half strength, and addition, while a Tyranage monster unit from your army, excluding Battleshock units, is at its starting strength, add two to the OC characteristic of models in that unit. Why are we talking about Crusher Stampede today? Two reasons. One, I was really trying to figure out what I could do with an ignore mods anything in Tyranids. Unfortunately, our only source of it is Swarm Guided Salvos, into which you gain ignores cover, ignore mods to ballistic skill, and hit roll, right? And then thing number two is that, well, apparently we've been doing pretty good with it. Fairly good. Where people are finally bringing it, right? Like, we've been bringing it, and we've been, more or less, appearing almost every week, okay? And it's weird that it hasn't still caught on, but as I see from other detachments that have good, other armies that have good detachments, and the people aren't using them, even though other people are winning with them, that happens sometimes. And first, before I go further, Michael Duff, if you're watching this, or if you know Michael Duff, please tell them that the random internet stranger is really happy that we're doing this. Stop bringing so many fucking small units in Crusher Stampede. I've talked about it so many times as my pet peeve because we don't even do that shit in Invasion Fleet. Well, now we might start, but that's a different topic. But going to the, like, Lenin list and shit, uh, we don't. We didn't run that much, and then you'll see a lot of Crusher Stampede lists that are just filled to the fucking room with it, and it's just like, why? Why are you doing this? Just go to Invasion Fleet at that point. Uh, but neither here nor there. We have Swarmlord, Biovors, Lictor, Lictor, Pyrovors. Exocrine, Exocrine, Maliceptor, Norn, Emissary, Psychophage, Trigon, T Triple, Tyran Effects. Very similar list over here with Pascal. Right? So... I guess I'll scroll down so you can see it. Cool. I just want to think about, well, besides the things that I've suggested in the past about Crusher Stampede, what else is going on in the meta right now? Well, apparently, Knights are doing okay. And if you keep up with team tournaments, Crusher Stampede Tyranids usually beats the brakes off of Knights. It is like Pacific Rim, but we win, right? Our big bugs beat the bots. Also, if you want to play knights, apparently you need to name yourself Dick. And there you go. But beyond that, knights are known for war dog spam and armager spam. And let's just look at what a war dog typically could be. Approximation, right? Uh, and this will be one of the most popular ones, the war dog brigand. 12 inch move, T10, 3 up save, 5 up invuln at range. 12 wounds a pop. We're looking at a spread of ranged weapons. Not something that our monsters have to worry about. This will be important later. We're looking at Brigand. Each time this model makes an enraged attack that targets the closest eligible unit, improves the AP characteristic of that attack by 1, and 165 points for the model. Why did I not go over the guns? Well, quite frankly, ours are usually better and why does that matter? Well, it is true that in the one-to-one, -one, we already know that we beat the Knights, typically, okay? You do have to wonder if you can beat everything else, i.e. the small shit, which, typically, we can do! Hey, would you look at that? Usually we can do that. Half of our shit is... Blast and Flamers. So, usually, we don't have a problem killing the small shit either. So, problem solved, right? Um, close, but we'll get to there. 
we also see that there's 12 inch move that most of our monsters don't have but in crusher stampede we can kind of pad that stat and in oc we can also pad that stat movement if we could just go through a fucking wall we don't have to go around it and you go well chaos knights can that is for the titanic shit the little guys gotta do a little bit of movement shenanigans unless i'm missing an faq that i forgot about but yeah uh war dogs you know them you might have run into them by now but that's not the thing that worries us right now let's talk a little bit more about crusher stampede again and i'll put you here now so that we can go to the stratagems i think we all know that we use untrammeled ferocity quite a bit and many people will say they don't use anything else and herein lies the problem stop fucking doing that right like if we can go through invasion fleet and only use the five up feel no pain i don't want to hear anybody tell me that you can't use crusher stampede stratagems like what the fuck do you mean you don't know how to use an auto explode reroll hits in a fight phase minus one to hit in the fight phase tank shock ignore mods ignores cover like what the fuck do you mean you don't know how to use these or you just don't use them use the shit like that that's that so now that you're done being yelled at okay untrammeled ferocity lets you move through walls on uh if you roll a one on a d6 if you move through a wall that was higher than four inches your battle shock whoop the fucking do right this gives us the movement solution that we are looking for on a lot of our monsters now into the other thing that i guess you could say is a critique of somebody else's list but i really feel like this is a f personal choice flavor thing i just want to note in crusher stampede list i prefer hive tyrant why because i use the other stratagems right and not to say that the other people don't right like i don't i don't know what happened in these tournaments but quickly you'll find that it's cool to have a bonus cp from the swarm lord to use to walk through a wall and then i use a cp maybe to reroll something however how about i walk through the wall for free maybe need a reroll or if i don't need a reroll I do shit like ignores cover, auto explode once my shit pops, tank shock. Like, you see how often we get tank shocked, right? Like, people do that shit to us. Now we have the option to do that shit to them. So do that shit to them, okay? So, I'm just a fan of Hive Tyrant. Also, I need all of my shooting to be efficient and happen. So, if I can give my shit assault... And lethal is from Onslaught. While well, a friendly Tyranid unit is within 6 inches of this model. Ranged weapons equipped by models in that unit have the Assault ability and Lethal Hits abilities. If I can give my shit Assault, like an Exocrine, a Malice, or Tyran effects, they can get into position. And then with Lethal Hits, they can start killing shit a little bit easier. Right? So, I... Personally, I'm more of a fan of the Hive Tyrant, and I've also talked about um, the Swarm Lord in a separate video for a separate reason. But I will just say that if you can't, if you're not putting your shit up there, right, to have this 12 inch aura of Lord of Deceit, Malign Presence, it doesn't do anything, okay? If you are going against a ranged army that doesn't have to be next to the Swarm Lord for most of the fight, doesn't matter. If you are going against a melee army that finally punches your Swarm Lord in the face and you kind of didn't do jack shit about it, it doesn't matter, right? Because you weren't safe enough, okay? So, I think uh, you should keep in mind, maybe you want to have the Hive Tyrant who probably will live longer by hanging in the back because you just want to put out will of the hive mind and the aura so that's that's just my flavor option but again there are reasons for the swarm lord that people will use such as stacking not feeling that they need to go through a wall every turn and then finally having a round where they pop the fuck off that can be your flavor too but for this purpose maybe the hive tyrant then we go on to the exit grind we know it by now but just really quickly movement of eight T10, 3 of save, 14 wounds, OC of 4, 
this unwounded, of course, becomes but da 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 six. So, right, and we know what we are bringing the Exocrine for: the cannon and symbiotic targeting. With the Bioplasmic Cannon, Blast, Heavy, 36 inches, D6 plus 3, Hidden on 3, Strength 9, AP 3, Damage 3, and Symbiotic Targeting in your shooting phase. After this model has shot, select one enemy unit hit by one or more of those attacks until the end of the phase. Each time a friendly tier in each model makes an attack that targets that unit, reroll a hit roll of 1. 135 points. That is 30 points less than a Chaos Knight. Why is that important? Well, if they could fit the fucking list, I think we could fit the list, right? We've also seen a couple of Chaos Knight lists and Imperial Knight lists that are slowly starting to remember. If you can... Where'd you go? You were here this morning. Yeah, bring <laughs> bring big shit. You can fit the other small shit. Like... We're seeing that they bring shit like Canis Rex and Night Gallants. I think we can bring the shit our damn selves, okay? So, it can fit. And until somebody manages to damage it, it's 6 OC. That's only 2 less than a knight. And if they can do it, we can do it too. Right? Right. Then going on, Maliceptor. We stopped bringing the Maliceptor because we realized that the Tyranifex was our new favorite tank. Uh, especially when it came to shooting what we needed to with the Maliceptor. Maliceptor was earlier in the edition because we did not have um, a way to deal with T9 and T10. Now our Exocrine can deal with T9. And the Maliceptor, funny enough, has been back on the rise, but also not on the rise too. Like if you go here, you got two of them. Got two of them. And we're back to... Maybe just one Maliceptor. So, this one is a... You can, if you want. Um, I personally, most cases, I will make a Maliceptor a Norn Emissary. Like we have seen with Michael. That's usually my take on it. Um, but for T11, 3 up save, 4 up invone, 14 wounds, 4 OC, Psychic Overload Blast, Psychic 18 inches, D6 plus 3, 3 up. 10 strength, AP 2, damage 3. It's not bad, especially when we have encephalic diffusion. While an enemy unit is within 6 inches of this model, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, subtract 1 from the hit roll, and if that enemy unit is below half strength, subtract 1 from the wound roll as well. 170 points, i.e. 5 more than a war dog. Now, to that end, a lot of people will tell you it is annoying as shit to try to kill another monster while you are minus one hit because of a Maliceptor. So, maybe we do start to look towards Maliceptors again if you were to run this style of list, into which you have a couple of Maliceptors to give that minus one to hit for possibly some ranged attacks, and then you rely on Savage Roar for melee, if it needs to, for somebody else. So, Maliceptors, we know them. We can see them again. Tyran effects. Now, this is the one that really, as you can see in the other list, where it's triple Tyran effects. I, I think in singles, we don't. This is weird to say. Didn't think I'd ever say this. I don't think we need that many. I at first was happy to see triple Tyran effects, just because it's like, oh, somebody did it. And then I saw that, like, many people were doing it. I'm like, wait, hold on now. I don't think we really need the third. You'll find that it takes your opponent a lot to get through the first. So, I don't know. Maybe you want to go triple. Not another commentary on their list, but I think you'll find not too many people are able to just get rid of a Tyran effect. So, this is the thing that lets us absolutely dunk on knights. We traditionally don't need it past that. Now, sisters are still talking crazy with Castigator, Exorcist, Emulator, so maybe if you want to go pop those. But, hey, Tyrant Effects, 9-inch move, T12 to have saved 16 wounds. And we're traditionally bringing the Rupture Cannon now, heavy, 48 inches, 2 shots, hitting on 3s, 18 on the strength, AP4, D6 plus 6 damage. Resilient Organism, once per battle, when an attack is allocated to this model, you can change the damage characteristic of that attack to zero. You get a blank, 
190 points. Acid Spray is still good Overwatch. If you want to bring, maybe maybe you make the third Tyran effects Acid Spray. Uh, acid effects, if you will. That way you can clear the infantry even easier that we were already clearing. And it's a torrent compared to Blast, so you don't have to worry about the, well, I have big guns, never tire, but whoops, I am Blast, so can't really just do that willy-nilly. So with Acid Spray, you have an 18-inch Flamer, D6 plus 6, Auto Wounding because it's a Flamer, Strength 6, AP 2, Damage 2. I think, maybe, maybe that might be the angle. Maybe we throw up. Eh, I, I will say, I don't I don't think we need more than one Acid Spray Tyrant effects. But if we're going triple Tyrant effects, is maybe make one of them Acid Spray and the other two Rupture Cannons. Like, we still have Stinger Salvos on it, right? It's still there. Uh, 24 inches, 8 attacks, hidden on 3, strength 5, AP 0, damage 1. Just for some chip, clear the chaff. You're bringing a T-Fex because you want to pop the big shit. Maybe just make it a little bit easier on self by making that third Tyrant effects acid spray. Then we go to what else was in the list. Yes, finally, finally, we are remembering. And hell, I'll say this to my damn self. Was it in my last Crusher Stampede video? I believe so. That even I forgot to mention my one of my favorite little pieces. The Psychophage. It is a monster. It's a T9 monster with a 3-up save. 10 wounds, and a 5 up feel no pain its damn self. Psychoclastic Torrent ignores covers Torrent. 12 inches, D6 attacks, strength 6, AP 1, damage 1, melee weapons, talents, and betentacled maw. Anti-Psycho 4 up, devastating wounds. D6 plus 1 attacks, hidden on 3s, strength 6, AP 1, damage 2. With Biostimulus and Aura, while a friendly Tyranid unit is within 6 inches of this model, they have a 5 up, uh, 6 up feel no pain, excuse me. Feeding Frenzy, each time this model makes a melee attack that targets a unit that is below its starting strength, add one to the hit roll. If that target is also below half strength, add one to the wound roll as well. Either way, this motherfucker is getting plus one, plus one to hit somehow, and possibly plus one to wound somehow too. But you're not bringing it for that. You don't really give a shit about it picking up any of the little shit, but it can do that. However... We see how annoying a 5-up feel-no-pain on one model at a time is for our opponent. What if, hear me out, we gave our models a 6-up feel-no-pain, but multiple of them at a time. Now, depending on what boards you play on and what things get set up, that can be a little bit hard to um, always keep around, I guess, without one thing getting popped. But then if they start shooting a 95-point Psychophage with a 5-up feel-no-pain and 10 wounds on T9, yeah, they quickly realize... That they are wasting their time. That could have been used on something else. And this makes shit like your Tyran effects and your Malice Scepter still a bit bulkier. So while it's not as good as a 5 of Feel No Pain, it's better than no Feel No Pain for a monster that can also... Here's the other thing, right? Almost anything you can do with the Lictor. Almost. Hear me out. You can do with the Psychophage. Yes, it's a lot more points. It's 35 points more to do that. Okay? Don't worry. We saved 35 points by not playing a war dog and playing an Exocrine. Whatever. But if you just need something with OC to stand somewhere and not die, the Psychophage can do that for you. And then it has a flamer. If something just gets a little too froggy, fire Overwatch. Take some wounds off some shit. And this has things to get through. The shit that it needs to get through. Let's talk about points efficiency for a motherfucking second. Right? I am talking about a 95 point model. That is a monster. That will get plus one to hit. Possibly get plus one to wound in several places. And it has reroll hits in fight. It has devastating wounds on its damn self. That means that even if it's not a psyker. It has dev wounds. So on sixes. On the wounds, it's devastating wounds. It has a flamer. It has D6 plus 1 attacks. It can lift the little shit that might get in your way of your big shit. Or pick up the shit that your big shit tried to hit with a flamer. I like the Psychophage. 
is it the best thing? Do I recommend throwing three in every list? Probably not. Two, I still maybe, I don't know, I'll be honest. Uh, two might be a little bit egregious as well. But I I will say one, it, come on now, you can bring one cycle phase for 95 points. And we go on to Trigon. I have been a Trigon apologist for a long time. Now, when those points were a little bit up, uh, I don't know about that. Like, I wasn't that much of a Trigon apologist. But at his current points, I still would like it to come down. But as much as people like to bitch about three-inch deep strikes, why the fuck aren't we bringing ours? Um, more often. As we can see in the list today, people are bringing them. But this goes to a point that I would like to thank... Um, as some people pointed out, the like, what our monsters can do. So we had, I had a Screamer Killer video, and a couple of people talked about, you know, some things in positive lights and like the hitter, the compare contrast to the horror specs and shit like that. But what does all that have to do with the Trigon? Well, our Trigon is a 10 inch move, T10, 3 up, say, 14 wounding monster that can deep strike. Did I say it can deep strike? It can deep strike. It has bioelectric pulse sustained hits too. 12 inch range, 6 attacks, hitting on 3, strength 5, AP 0, damage 1. Just a little bit of chip damage, who gives a fuck about the range weapon, you just have it. But the melee weapons, Trigon Scything Talons, melee, 12 attacks, hitting on 3, strength 9, AP 2, damage 3. Yeah, if you can get a bunch of attacks to a unit, that is AP 2, damage 3, and well, strength 9, right? You can pick up some shit. You can pick up some shits. And to which I say, maybe bring two Trigons. Because deep striking at three inches thanks to subterranean tunnels. Each time this model is set up on the battlefield using the deep strike ability, it can be set up anywhere on the battlefield that is more than three inches horizontally away from all enemy units. When doing so, if this model is set up within nine inches of more, one or more enemy units until the end of the turn, it is not eligible to declare a charge. Right? So... Uh, this is a rapid ingress target, just like this fucking Lictor. Um, it is a regular reinforcements target, deep strike target, just like Gargoyles. It is the cost of more than both of those combined. It is also a 3-inch deep striking monster in Crusher Stampede that can get reroll hits, um, can get plus 1 to hit. With some synapse somewhere, it can go to strength 10. It can do the things. It can do the things. Now, this is also why I go, maybe you want to bring a second Trigon instead of a third Tyran effects. Again, not on anybody's list, just moving forward, maybe that's the option. That way you can treat it as point scoring and fuck shit upping and also fuck shit upping, maybe point scoring, right? Like cunning and brutal, but brutal and cunning, two of them. Fuck it. Maybe we go try Trigons. Try, try Trigons. There you go. Maybe we try three of them. Uh, because points, I, I do think people forget that monsters can score points, right? Like, if they're somewhere, they can score the point, especially if it's a Trigon behind a fucking building that just was there to score containment. Maybe you needed to kill some shit? Guess what? You have the melee attacks to kill some shit. I think we are sleeping on the Trigon. I currently would look at two so far, like, I think two are, two is arguable, right, when, like, how do you screen out a second three-inch deep strike, right, like, that's, that's kind of egregious, especially if we're going for what we're going for, and again, 170 points, same cost as a Malice Scepter, five more than the War Dog Brigand, and we go to the horror specs, 125 points. T11, 3 up save, 14 wounds, grasping tongue, precision, 12 inches, 1 attack, hitting on 3, well, 3, because you're not really getting sustained from anything in here, uh, yeah, so hitting on 3, strain 6, AP 2, D6 plus 1 damage, and don't worry, sometimes that tongue might surprise you, melee weapons, ravenous maw, 14 attacks, hitting on 3, strain 7, AP 1, damage 2, shoveling claws, extra attacks, Four attacks hitting on threes. Strength 14, AP 2, damage D6 plus 1. Grizzly Spectacle. Each time this model is selected to fight, after resolving its attacks, if one or more 
enemy units were destroyed by those attacks, each enemy within 6 inches of this model must take a battle shock test. Now, this is going to be probably one of the detachments in which this doesn't matter. Um... You can make it matter in some other detachments, but you're probably not bringing a Neuralector for this idea. I've talked about not hating a Neuralector because I'm already plus one to hit. I might as well try to be plus one to hit and wound without being wounded myself. But the hard aspect, 125 points for quite a bunch of melee attacks. This will pick up the shit you're worried about tying up your Maliceptor in melee or tying up your Exocrine in melee. Yeah, just throw a Howard Specs at the situation. It'll get rid of it. Especially for 125 points. When this goes pop, I don't care because it's 125 points. I don't know if you've noticed this right now, but the Harvester um, monsters, they had to make them a little bit cheaper so you can play them in Assimilation Swarm because they know that you need more than, you know, ideally more than two of each copy in some way or some shape, right? So that's cheap. And now you wonder, why aren't we running this? I don't know. I'm asking you this too. The uh, horror specs, bring it out. It's 14 wounds. It's T11, right? If they're struggling with T10, they're going to struggle with T11. So, horror specs, I am a horror specs apologist. There you go. Then we go to the Screamer Killer. Made a video on this one. Um, I think we can all agree, over it, right? Like, I wasn't trying to say that it's not over it for what it is right now. But... There are some people that do speak fondly of it. Um, I shouldn't say fondly, like like with a capital F. Um, but like, you know, do remind you, it does enough damage sometimes if that's what you need it to do and can get it there. Um, it's T9. So, a two-up save is already better than a lot of the saves we've seen so far. Ten wounds. Bioplasmic Scream, Assault Blast, 18 inches, D6 plus 3, Hidden on 4, Strength 8, AP2, Damage 1, Melee Weapon, Screamer, Killer, Talons, uh, 10 attacks, Hidden on 3, Strength 10, AP2, Damage 3. Death Scream, in your shooting phase after this model has shot, select one enemy unit, uh, one unit hit by one or more of those attacks. That unit must take a battle shock test, subtracting one from that test. Uh, it's okay. It is a monster, 145 points. Just wanted to point out, uh, the melee weapons hurt, and people do apparently have better interactions with their screamer killers than I think many of us would complain about. But hey, if it works for somebody, I'm gonna talk about it. So, screamer killers, figured I'd bring that up. And I guess since I'll bring it up, I should remind people on this one and the note of the horror specs. Savage Roar is a separate test. They have to fail the test triggered by Savage Roar, not just being battle shocked. So keep that in mind. Then we go on to, whoops, whoopsie, two hot takes that I accidentally just spoiled. First heart, heart take, heart, ha, 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 harpy take is the harpy. Uh, T9, three of saves, 12 wounds. Why am I even putting this on your screen after talking about it in a different list and I can't make it um, loan up? Because there's something funny you can do. There's, it's funny. That's all, I'm, that's all I'm trying to tell you is that it's funny. It has a 20 plus inch move because it's aircraft. But it is an aircraft with hover, i.e. it can lose the aircraft keyword um it is a monster that can fly which means that it goes down to 20 inches okay but until it's damaged it has two oc and you can put it through walls and then it can drop a spore mine so it is the most expensive action doer i think you might ever want to talk about but I just wanted to say you can do it. That's all I'm here. That's all I'm here to say. Okay? That we won't dwell on it further. You it's just funny that it's possible. Then the toxic run. Another thing that I won't dwell on because it's not that good, but fuck if you were worried about infantry past the horror specs, there's access to the toxic run. Uh T eleven, three up say fourteen wounds, and it specializes in being anti infantry. Hopefully we see this thing take a massive points buff where it like goes down to, I don't know, fucking 115. Or maybe they saw my video talking about how it could be buffed. I'll take that as well. But I just want to say, 
it's here. And the second that this thing gets you buffed accordingly, that's when you will see me start talking about it endlessly again. Or, I guess not endlessly again, but when I start telling you, hey, why do we bring this thing? So I will be that annoying bastard. Here's your heads up on that one. Then we go to the Neuro Tyrant and the Zoe's, into which I am still on the fence on including in an oops all monsters list. Uh, it is a monster and can make a monster unit with the Zoanthropes, which are good. I, however, have been in this list specifically. I think any of the attached versions is a lot of steep points for what this idea to be. I might have put out the Carnifex video by now. Or I might not have. We'll see. Um, but old one iron Carnifexes can get up to 15 OC until you kill one of the Carnifexes. And then you have 3 plus 2, 5. Um, and then we have 3... 6, 18, so we are getting a lot of OC, but it's also not the hardest thing to kill a Zoanthrope. Um, ignores cover and ignore modifiers, I thought was going to be the slammer jammer there. Uh, it's okay, it's a good overwatch, but it is still a very slow thing. So if you want to make the argument of shit being too slow, it's the think tank, unfortunately. Uh, for the cost and for what it is, it is it's a little bit steep. But I did want to bring up that people have brought the Think Tank and had a lot of fire success. Like Overwatch, it's nasty. The Zoe's, I mean, neither of these benefit from the detachment rule, really. Um, I guess you could argue the Neuro Tyrant, but never mind, it's in Melee too as well, so... Nobody really benefits from a lot of the shit in Crusher Stampede, except for the fact that if somebody like starts trying to punch you, you can make um, the minus one to hit and possibly minus one to wound. And if they fail that battle shock test, you get to trigger your own spirit leech ability with the Zoe's. But beyond that, um, it's okay. Not the strongest option, but also not the worst option. You can put ominous presence if you want. But I figured we should bring that up. And yeah, I say all that to say that the list that I wrote up, just to see how many points I could fucking fit, it's not a... It's not one that I so far recommend. But I think, and that's why I'm not putting it necessarily on the screen. I think, just hear me out, a Hive Tyrant, two Exocrine, a Horospects, two Norn Emissaries, a Psychophades, two Trigons, and two Tyranifexes isn't too bad. And, you know, I did sneak my Norn in there. And I guess we'll talk about why I snuck the Norn Emissary into that conversation here. Um, So remember when I said that little model count can give you OC problems? Here is your solution, okay? The way that we were doing that shit in Synaptic Nexus, you could throw a Norn onto a place. And they won't move it. Now, in Synaptic Nexus, you go, but you have minus one AP in Synaptic Nexus. And then I tell you, I have a four up and vulnerable save. If you were trying to shoot me with anything less than AP2, you were goofy. So, you know, Norn Emissaries will typically stay there. We know what they do, but just for anybody that doesn't, 10 inch move. T11, two up save, four up in bone, 16 wounds. Five for their OC before they get to objective, because you are choosing singular purpose. At the start of the first battle round, select one of the following. Select one enemy unit until the end of the battle. Each time this model makes an attack that targets that unit, you can re-roll the hit roll, and you can re-roll the wound roll, or the one that you're probably doing. Select one objective marker until the end of the battle. While this model is within range of that objective marker, it has the Feel No Pain 5 Up ability and an OC characteristic of 15. This also has a natural resilience, into which this model has the feel no pain for up ability against mortal wounds. 275 points is is steep, but we've seen Michael can make it work. 
right? I think I think you can have some arguments to bring it. And especially I've also say it, I might myself go with a Norn emissary over the Maliceptor. Um if I were to take this list now, if I personally, not not to say I'm a tournament topper and shit like that, but the way that I would change this list to go for my Imperial Knight, Chaos Knight idea is Maliceptor becomes Norn Emissary, also leaving the Lictors and Biovores. Um, but that's just, again, if I were to do it, Pyrovor as well, whatever, right? Um, and then spend some points on to enhancements with the extra leftover points, right? But the Norn Emissary, the ranged weapons aren't what you want out of damage-wise. Um, onto bigger targets. Onto things in size, it could be better, right? With the Psychic Tendril Neural Lance, melt a 2, Psychic, 18 inches, to attacks, hidden on 2, strength 12, AP 3, damage D6, leaves you wanting more. Um, that is true. Now, what if I told you it has Psychic Tendril Neural Blast, Blast Psychic, 18 inches, 2 D6, Hitting on two ups, strength six, AP two, damage one. Now, two D six can be a lot of dice. At blast, you get more die. Or more dice? Can be a lot of die and get more dice? Or is it die both times? Anywho, uh, that can be a lot of attacks to clear the chaff that you might worry about getting to your shit and out OCing you. And that's a mean Overwatch out of a Norn Emissary. It could be. Because you could also roll Snake Eyes and look like a fucking dumbass. Now, why am I choosing that over the Maliceptor? For the natural feel no pain, for the OC, for the feel no pain versus mortals, it's the same range profile of 18 inches. Not the same amount of damage, but if I have a big target, I can steal shoot with the Neural Lance. Like, it's not, like, completely off the table. It has a chance to go terribly wrong, but it can also go terribly right in the right circumstances. And I have more options for melee weapons, having both the Scything Talons, Monster Scything Talons, and Monster's Rending Claws. Scything Talons being 6 attacks, hitting on 2, Strength 9, going up to 10 because of Synapse, AP 2, Damage 3, and the Rending Claws being 4 attacks, hitting on 2, Strength 7, going up to 8, AP 2, Damage 2. The package is there. If you have to... Here's the thing with objective control, right? You have to have at least one objective, you have to have at least one OC onto a point, and have more than your opponent. So if we're worried about fucking War Dogs... Two of them together, right? You can 15 and plink off and tell one to fuck off, right? Because of the profile you have. If one's in your face, Neural Lancet, then kick its ass with the melee weapons, okay? Uh, they probably are not getting to you first before you are getting to them with a Norn Emissary, um, as well as you having your Tyran effects down probably the same shooting lines that you might expose your Norn Emissary to. Your Norn can also just stand still in a place and score you points for shit like containment, uh, whatever the fuck else you might need, because it can just survive. The same argument for the Psychophage can be made for the Norn Emissary. That's just the, hey, uh, nothing's wrong with, I think nothing's wrong, I'm, fu I'm a fucking Norn apologist, I'm sorry. Um, I've used that term quite a lot this video, but here we are. Um, into which, I think there's potential. If people can figure out, hey, I can bring a big knight. What's it, you? Yeah, I can bring big knights and maybe a couple of small shits. And we all have to operate under 2,000 points. I can bring similar thing. And do okay. Ish. I think. Maybe. I hope. But yeah, I just wanted to share this idea as we have just seen a pretty bulky weekend happened. And, you know, we have access to it. It's one of those things where obviously people are getting close. 
And if people can do the same thing over and over here, um, for the most part, right? We, of course, have people hopping onto the Sam Pope list. Um, like with the later ones. Who was it when I just made that video? Was it? Who was it? I've lost you. There, there we go. Um, like with Ben. Um, you, you see that that's taking a turn as well, but we were on the John Lennon list for a while, right? So, you know, I think it's one of those things that it just has to be figured out, and then you go for it. Maybe we have really been overestimating how many points scoring we need. I think we have been. Um, and then you see less units, and guess what? You can still do okay if you know what you're doing. Uh, and again, past that, I'd just say, hell, I want another 3-inch deep strike, and I prefer lethals for my shit to be more efficient. Especially with a 2d6 overwatch, I I might lethal the fuck away some shit with, a, with that blast profile. Right? It's not a torrent, so you still have to get the hits. Um, and arguably, the torrent would be better if you are... Maybe. Hey, maybe you do the exact same list as we did over here with Michael, and you make one an acid spray and pick up some other shit, and you don't have to worry about that blast from the Malice up there or the Norn Emissary or something like that. But again, that's all all my ideas. I think Crusher Stampede has hope. I think it has legs. I think, I think we can do it. So yeah, I just want to talk about Crusher Stampede. I like Crusher Stampede. I, I think you could probably tell. I, I don't think that was a secret. But yeah, if you like the video, like it. Got a comment for me, comment. And until next time, peace out, my monstrosities.